This man believes in what we're doing. He knows about the war on the workers. Let's hear it for Ed Schultz. Thank you. Appreciate the welcome. It's great to get around the country and meet a lot of people and resourceful Americans, workers. So uh, when I was asked to speak here today, I thought I'd uh, let you see if I'm as big a son of a bitch as the right wing says I am. <laughs> and I don't want to disappoint him. I want you to know that. When I first came to MSNBC, I wanted to talk about the middle class because I knew back in April of 2009 that the middle class was under attack. Now that war has expanded to the war on the poor, to the war on workers, to the war on whoever is a wage earner in America. Mitt Romney and his crowd thinks you don't pay enough. You haven't done enough. And they have no plan for you. Let me tell you what we're up against. Within the last hour, a woman stood up in a crowd in Cleveland, Ohio, and asked Mitt Romney if she thought President Obama should be brought up on charges of treason. Mitt Romney did not answer the question, but he went on to say that he would operate within the guise of the Constitution. They hate the President. They hate workers, they hate organized labor, and they have nothing on the table for you when it comes to opportunity in your future. In fact, in Ohio, in Wisconsin, they even want to take away your voice in the workplace. This is their vision for America. They think that guys like me who came from the middle class and have had the fruits of a good career now in the 1%, they want me to have another tax break. I don't want any more freaking money. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want, you know what I want? I want my nine grandkids. I know, nine's a hell of a lot, isn't it? When they come to the lake, they eat everything. Seems like I'm always going to the grocery store. I wouldn't have it any other way. What about their future? What about what are we going to do for them? Are we going to set the table for them? And you know, when you go on the road, it's amazing the people you run into. We were over at Bob Hope Airport yesterday. I was on the Bill Maher show on Friday night. And they had the last flying B-24 there. It was a display that they go around the country and fly. I believe it's the Collings Foundation. And they had a P-51 Mustang, and they had another Warbird, a B-17G. And there were a number of people there who understood what the last generation did. And in the hot sun, there was a man out there who had a small table set up. He had some pictures. He had some books. It was so hot, he moved the table underneath the big wing. And when he got reset up, I went over to him. I said, did you fly on this airplane? He said, well, I, I flew on one just like it. It's a B-17G. I was a, a bombardier. I said, sir, how old are you? He says, I'm 87. I said, how many missions did you do? He says, 34. I said, all over Germany? He said, yep. 1944, 1945. He says, I was one of the lucky ones to come back. I looked down on the table, and there was a picture of 10 guys in an old black and white. He's the only one alive. He had a few books on his table. 
He says, I, I wrote this one because I thought maybe I should tell my story. I bought a book from him. I looked through it. I said, how old were you? My first mission when I was 19. I said, you didn't question any of it, did you? He says, no. America was really in a, in a tight spot. I introduced myself. He said, I know who you are. We didn't talk politics. But there was a look of understanding eye to eye between me and Norman. And his bottom lip started to quiver. He said, Ed, are we going to be okay? I said, Norman, we're going to be okay. He comes from the unselfish generation. He comes from the generation that couldn't do enough. He comes from a time when America was under intense pressure to survive. Now, we don't hear the planes overhead. In the year 2012, we're not avoiding airstrikes. But there's a different kind of pressure right now in America. And it's going to take an unselfish person to save this country. And whereas the conservatives and the Republicans want to give more to the wealthiest Americans, they're selfish when it comes to you. That's why I'm on TV. And that's why I'm on radio. And that's why I will not give up. Because I'm going to remember Norman. And it was, this was just a simple road trip to the West Coast. And to come over here and visit with you. You see, you can live the Romney plan. You can see it right in front of your eyes. Because if you dig into the devil in the detail on the Romney plan, you will find out that Mitt Romney wants to cut Norman's benefits. What did this 87-year-old man do that was wrong? What did this man do in his lifetime that deserves to have his benefits taken from him? Not only cutting the veterans, but turning Medicare into a voucher program. We all know what that's about. It's called less care. It's called fewer people. Do you think people in their 80s are going to have the wherewithal and the understanding to know what to do with a voucher? Do we care about the generation that was unselfish that set the table for us? Do we give a damn? Yes. There's one person in this race that does care. He's already in the Oval Office. But they think he should be tried for treason. In fact, the candidate that he's going to be going against doesn't have the character, the guts, to stand that person down and say, President Obama is not going to be tried for treason. Mitt Romney couldn't say it. Is it because he's a black guy? Is it because he's added jobs to the tune of $4 million? Is it because he had the guts to step forward and save the automobile industry? Is it because he knew how to take that 3 a.m. call and shoot those pirates in the head early in his administration? Hell, he was just warming up for bin Laden. Here's what I ask you to do. Go the extra mile the way Norman did. Don't question it. Do it. Go to your next door neighbor. Tell the truth. Speak up. Don't let them attack you. We're on the offensive in 2012. We're going to tell the truth to our neighbors. We're going to tell the story about what's happening to the war on women and the war on the poor and the war on public education. One of the greatest American values out there. Public education. What, why in the hell do they want to attack that? Well, you see these governors, these radical governors have got to balance their state budgets. No better place to go than to go after the voting block of the teachers' union. No better place to go than to cut the budget and have fewer teachers, fewer schools, bigger classes, and better dropout rate. Because you see, they really do love cheap labor. That's what they want. 
So we're at that moment over America. We have a choice. We have a choice to engage, or we have a choice to be like 2010. I know that workers in this country will have the resilience and have the reason and have the heart and the desire to do what has to be done. They can pass all the Citizens United laws they want. They can't take your heart. They can't take your passion. And I'm not going to let them change the facts. And the facts are that we can turn this country around the same way this country was built on the backs of labor. This country will be rebuilt on the backs of labor. And this country will not stop until we have everybody in this country employed. Just think about it. We had economists say on my show on MSNBC that before the election, oh, we'll never be below 9% unemployment. We'll never hit 8.5% unemployment. These policies that President Obama has put forward is never going to work. Really? Where was the market in March of 2009? Just over 6,000? Now it's over 13,000. Hell, the righties ought to love this guy. They want to get rid of what they call Obamacare. Why? You got something against the 30 million people that it's going to cover? You going to attack the students? Oh, yeah. They want to repeal Obamacare because that will make all those 4 million students that are now able to be on their parents' policy until they're 26. We'll just throw them off to the side, and oh, by the way, we're going to raise their college loan rate. We're going to get it back to where it was, 6.4%. Hell, we're going to try to get it to 7 if we can. Is that what Norman fought for? Is that what Norman thought America was going to turn into, an attack on workers? Republicans will not come on the Ed Show because they know I'd kick their ass. That's right. That's right. Now, I want to be clear now, everything I say is under the microscope now that I'm the 8 o'clock guy, East Coast time, on a big cable network that's beating CNN and right behind O'Reilly, so i got to watch what I say. When I said I want to kick their ass, it doesn't mean I want to take them out back and do that. That's not... I'm, I'm talking about a debate, okay? But I... But I can tell you, in my younger day, I did have a couple of bar shops. <laughs> Look, I'm going to have on the Ed Show, either tonight or tomorrow night, a teacher, a counselor, and a principal from York School District in Pennsylvania. The principal, who I just talked to before I came on stage here. She moved from North Carolina to the York City School District in Pennsylvania because she wanted to make a difference. She's furloughed now. She's one of 300,000 teachers and administrators that we have decided to get rid of in this country to make state budgets work so the wealthy and the corporations can have their tax breaks. The latest promo that's running on MSNBC about the Ed Show is I'm walking in front of my high school, Mari High School. We went through big things. We went through the protests of the Vietnam War and the big debates. We went through force busting for racial equality. I went to a black high school. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Public education was the best thing that ever happened to me because those teachers in that school cared about kids. And they still do. But we have decided. But somewhere along the line, there's been this disconnect that we don't think that public education is an American value anymore. Your kids. How many of you here have extra money to send your kid to a private school? No. No. This isn't about the haves and the have-nots. The one great thing about public education is that we're in this locker room right now, and we're thinking alike to save the country and to move it forward. And one thing about public education, when the doors open in America the way it used to be, everybody's welcome. 
the rich, the poor, the gifted, the challenged, and the Republicans don't believe in that anymore. They want a charter school because it's profitable. It's not about profit. It's got to be about people. Now, I'm not an ordained minister or a priest, but my wife has got me pretty well connected. And I know that there's some of you in here that have voted Republican before. I'm here to forgive your sins. I'm not going to ask you to get down on your knee. You can keep sitting on your ass, that's all right. But you have to promise me you will not vote Republican again. Can I get your right hand on that? God bless you. Thank you for having me here. I will have a great working relationship as I had with James Hoffa. He's done wonderful things for workers in this country. You got a great organization, and I want you to know one thing that I'm with you. And we are at a point now in, in America, you're either with us or you're against us. There are absolutes. You're either with us or you're against us. You are either with us or you're against us. And just remember yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. God bless you, Teamsters. Thank you.